Thank you all for being here today on this uh, fabulous spring day. Uh, we're just happy to have a, an event that we're doing for Parks and Rec, and we're making some announcements in which we're not outside when it's raining. That seems to be the, uh, the kind of weather we normally get on these days. But with that said, I just want to, uh, of course, obviously welcome everybody here today. I want to rec recognize my fellow commissioners from the Board of Parks and Rec. Uh, we have Amy Gromowski, Alan Dillingham, McLean Bryant, of course, Dave Mecklenburg, and our fabulous director, Mr. Mark Henry, uh, is joining us as well as the other park staff that are here. And of course, I will introduce shortly uh, the mayor of our city, uh, Mayor Sly James, here in just a second. Uh, but we're happy uh, to be here today to announce, of course, the programming that we are going to be doing for the Mayor's Nights for 2013. Uh, the program, of course, is uh, in conjunction with both the mayor's office as well as the city of Kansas City's Parks and Recreation Department. And we are pleased to once again offer uh, safe and fun summer youth programming throughout uh, 2013. Uh, we're comprised of three specific sport tournaments, the night hoops, night kicks, and night nets uh, that will provide wholesome, secure, nighttime summer activity for youth at KC parks, community centers, and facilities. Uh, Mayor Nights are not your standard athletic program, though, however. Uh, they also include a mandatory education component uh, requiring each player and participant uh, to participate in a series of, of uh, classes such as ACT prep, uh, job training, and life skills. So we're really pleased about having those components as well. A social component, uh, of course, is Club KC that happens, uh, that was uh, started last year. And this provides an opportunity for youth to gather in a secure yet fun environment on weekends throughout the summer at our community centers as well. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more in greater detail about these. Uh, these, these details about uh, the program that we're going to be doing uh, throughout the summer. Uh, of course, we believe that Casey Park's uh, department plays a vital role in providing youth with recreational opportunities and enriching uh, those lives of our young people. Uh, these programmings are, uh, this program is effective in helping us to build the assets of young people in our community and the needs for their healthy development. Uh, we provide a wide range of high quality opportunities for young people to help them become our next generation of skilled, competent, and reasonable adults and great citizens for Kansas City. Uh, and I want to, before I has, ask the mayor to come up, uh, I want to know that, uh, or to note that one of the things that the components of the Mayor's Nights program is that everybody gets a, an ID card uh, for them to, to come participate. I have mine, uh, and mine's is here. And this ID card allows you to participate and get in here. I'm a high school freshman, is mine. Uh, I guess I just got out of middle school. And of course, we have the, the mayors who, Mayor, would you mind coming up here? We have your uh, high school senior ID card. We got your picture in there, by the way. That's Denzel Washington. That is Denzel Washington. <laughs> wow. Exactly. It is a great looking guy. And so our students, of course, when they come, uh, they present this, and they're going to have access to our programming, so we're really excited about that, Mayor. Right. as well. Uh, and so once again, on behalf of Parks and Rec and all of our staff, our board commissioners, we thank you all for being here. We look forward to, yet again, another successful year of 2013 Mayor Nights programming. Thank you. <laughs> In my opinion, a Parks and Recreation Department has to be more than hiring somebody who comes to a gym, takes a basketball, rolls it out onto the floor, and says, go play. Um, and that's exactly uh, the level that this Parks Board and Parks Department has transcended when they talk about coming to do those things on Mayor's Nights, but in the process of doing that, you're not just feeding your body, you're feeding your mind, and there are adults there who will help you do something other than learn how to dribble a ball, hit a ball over a net, or kick a ball. Uh, those things are important and fun, but uh, as we know, in this society, you need to be about a little more than that. I want to thank you all for joining me here today. Uh, it's actually been a pretty good day, and other than the weather. Um, and it's an important day for the city of Kansas City and for our Parks and Recreation Department and for my office. Uh, it's an important day for Kansas City's youth. It's important because, you know, our kids look to us to help them figure things out. One of the things they need to figure out is where can we have fun, do it safely, stay out of trouble, and enjoy ourselves and hang out this summer. Since, since Moby Dick was a minnow, um, kids have hung out. 
and they found some place to hang out. They they immortalized it in those movies with James Dean at the at the uh, soda place where they all drove their hot rods and they hung out there and then they went to race someplace. In the 50s, they hung out at the hamburger place and then they went and did whatever they did in the 50s. But it's always been true the kids have hung out and that's what we need to provide them with today. Parents are looking for us to help find places for their kids to have safe and healthy alternatives during the summer. And I want to tell you that's exactly what we as a city are doing. We're not just here to tell kids where they can't go and when they can't be there. We need to be able to tell them that we care about them and their safety. And most importantly, we're here to tell them that the city cares enough about them and their safety to make an investment in them and their safety. That is the entire concept behind the mayor's night's activities and programs. Uh, the city of Kansas City, Missouri, Parks and Recreation, and my office have been working closely together for the past year to fine tune the programs that we started in some instances last year and some are continuations from years past. Last spring, with the help of Casey Ark and the Kaufman Foundation, the Greater Kansas City Community Foundation, we surveyed, we talked to, we met with our local youth and asked them what types of activities they wanted and asked them to tell us what types of activities would keep them off the street in safe environments and ensure that they had fun and that they were doing something constructive during the summer and they told us what they wanted and we listened. That collaboration resulted in the creation of Club KC an eight-hour program that served over 7,400 kids and youth in this city last summer. It was a combined exercise that established sports-focused programs like night hoops, night kicks, and night nets, and gave our youth <coughs> a safe place to enjoy sports, but it also included the uh, community centers where they were able to come, hang out, talk to each other, dance, and enjoy each other's company. We're stepping things up a notch this summer. Instead of the uh, eight-week program that we had last year, this year we're expanding it to 12. Or went to one of the other clubs. There were lines that had formed of hundreds <coughs> of kids an hour and a half, two hours before the gates and the doors even opened. That's how important this activity was to them. And they waited when it was hot, and they waited when it was rainy, and just to get into this place to have fun and hang out with each other. And most importantly, during that entire eight-week summer, 7,400 kids served at three different locations. I don't think we had a single arrest. We didn't have any injuries. We had no major incidents of any type. It goes to show you that given the right opportunities, these children will take advantage of it, and they will enjoy themselves in a safer environment. So we're ready to kick off today the official registration for Mayor's Night events and to make some important announcements uh, regarding enhancements to the program. First and foremost, the most up-to-date information that you can find, that any child or parent can find about the Mayor's Night's events, that includes Club KC, Night Hoops, Night Kicks, Night Nets, all will be housed and continually updated on my website. And the website address is KC Mayor, I'm sorry, www.kcmayor.org slash Mayor's Nights. That's kcmayor.org slash Mayor's Nights. That's where the information will be, and that's where the registration for the program will take place. I also want to mention that this year, anyone who decides to join us at Club KC or participate in the Mayor's Night events needs to register up front. Register first, you can do that on the website, and then pick up your own credit card. Well, it's not actually a credit card, you can't buy anything. <laughs> I wish it was. Pick up your own ID card, just like this one, without the picture of Denzel Washington on it, and you can use that to get into the clubs and the activities. That's going to be a necessity this year. What we're hoping to do by that isn't to, to catalog information necessarily, but it allows us to offer some enhancements down the road, but it also allows us to get people in and out of the doors more efficiently. So all you have to do is go online and register, and then you come to any of the five community centers and pick up your card. Simple as that. Those community centers where you can pick up the card are right here at Brush Creek Community Center, Greg Kleist Community Center, 
Hillcrest Community Center, Tony Aguirre Community Center, and Kansas City North. Those happen to be, in addition to the places where you can pick up your credit cards, the five community centers as opposed to the three from last year where Mayor's Night activities will take place, where Club KC will take place. So we're expanding the time from 8 to 12 weeks, we're expanding the locations from 3 to 5, and you need to go there to pick up your credit card. So I just want to make sure everybody understands, register online, go pick up your credit card, and then you get to be able to stand in the VIP line <laughs> when you get here. You don't have to wait because some people aren't going to do it. They're going to wait and get here and then they're going to have to go through the process of registration and getting their ID cards on site. You don't want to do that. Be a VIP. Get your card early. Stand in the line on the red carpet. Look cool. <laughs> now, I think, I thought that this was supposed to be the first ID card, but John Paul obviously cheated me and got the first one, so that's all right. Mine's the main second one. Oh, okay, good. That's good answer. <laughs> um, it's pretty easy to get the credit card or the ID card uh, by reg registering and going to pick it up, but I also want to let you know that the first 100 kids to do it, to register before May the 20th on the website and pick up their credit card or their ID cards, will be able to receive a free pass to the Bay or to the Springs. So if you do it right, you're going to get some bennies out of it, and that's a pretty frosty deal. So that's 100 kids by May 20th. If you pick up your cards early and the first 100 and register and pick it up early, then you're going to get that free pass to the Bay or to the Springs. And as hot as the summer might be, you might want to be where there's some good water and things going on. So stay tuned to the website also, there will be additional uh, incentives and, and programs and prizes and things like that offered over the summer. So I just want to let everybody know that we are working hard to provide the places that are youth needs. Uh, that registration is open right now, you can go right now and register online if you hear this. And we want you to make sure that you get online, tell your friends about it, invite them to come to Club KC and to the other events invite them to have fun, invite them to learn over the summer. We are extremely optimistic that by providing our youth in this city with safe, good, alternative places to be, that they will enjoy this time out of school, that the city will be safe, that they will be productive and healthy, and that they may even make a few new friends along the way, and that's a good thing. Our focus is going to be on the safety of our children, over the course of the summer and delivering to them what they said that they wanted and what we can produce. So I want to thank you for being here to hear this, but I want to add one additional thing. This past Saturday, the city of Kansas City, working with a few private entities, had engaged KC internship program where we had invited youth of this city to come and apply for jobs in the city and with a few of our private partners. We had less than 100 jobs. We had 337 high-performing high school and, and early college kids show up. 337. That tells us something. That was a big crowd. They wanted to go do something. We didn't have enough for them to do. So I'm going to ask the people who actually have businesses in this city to think about that this summer. Because it's real easy to complain about the kids. But those kids that were there that Saturday, they were looking for jobs and a, and a way to get their foot in the door and get their lives started. So rather than for us to complain about our youth, we ought to recognize that the vast majority of them are just like the ones who were there on Saturday. And we ought to be trying to find a way to help them out. So if you've got a job, if you're willing to help a young person get their foot in the door, all you've got to do is call my office, 513-3500, it is 3,500. 3,500. I never called. Um, I just hit the speed dial. Um, call our office at 513-3500, and you can talk to Roosevelt there, and uh, or Hanaro, or any of our staff, and we will hook you up with some kids who need jobs and who will make your lives better, and you'll help make their lives better as well. So that's really all that we've got. I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank the Parks Department for everything that they do. 
Uh, they do it well. They're committed to this. I also want to let you know that this year the city itself has committed twice the amount of money as last year. Last year we committed $200,000. This year we're committing $400,000 and we're out raising more money as we speak. Uh, Jean-Paul and I are making calls and we're trying to find private sources for more money because this is a big deal, it's a big issue and it's something that we're going to do everything that we can do but we need the help of parents and we need the help of our private partners. So anybody who wants to help make this city great and safe and productive for children this summer, let us know and we'll find a way to get you involved. That's all I have. I assume that you may have a question or two. Last year, we served 7,000 people. We doubled the amount of funds, so therefore, you're planning on increasing the amount of folks that participate in the program as well? Well, I think that's going to be driven by the programs itself, but I would certainly anticipate that we would have more people. Last year, we turned kids away uh, because we had no more capacity to serve, and we only had three locations. So this year, we're adding a space up north and we're adding a space out south to pick up some of the others. I would anticipate that the numbers will be higher, yes. What was the thinking behind uh, initiating the ID card? Uh, it's really a matter of trying to get a hold of, it's kind of hard to have kids just flowing through, you know, without any controls whatsoever on a, uh, on a night when you've got, when you start off, you open up the doors and you've got hundreds of kids out there waiting. This way would make it a lot more efficient. We'll be able to make sure that we are A, counting kids, B, able to find a way to provide them with incentives and to keep track of them during the summer. For example, if you show up every night during the course of the summer, maybe we can do a prize for you. But the easiest way to do that is not with some guy there with a pencil and paper. It's there with, you can do it electronically. So we're basically just trying to make sure that we're offering an electronic means of tracking our clientele and being able to offer them things and to stay in touch with them. And it's ease of entry and, and exit really is what is a big part of it. Has anything changed as far as security goes at these locations? What's the plan there? The plan is the same. We will have the same security. We'll have internal security by contract. We'll have Kansas City, Missouri police officers on site. I'll be using the uh, Kansas City, Missouri School District as a uh, means of getting the word out to the students. And we're using every means that we can. We're using this means. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're, uh, we have uh, K, uh, KPRS uh, information being distributed to schools. We're using every means that we can to reach kids uh, and let them know that we have some programming for them this summer and what that programming is. We also have our Facebook, or not our Facebook pages necessarily, our websites for the Parks Department and my website are both there to provide information and we do all the social media things as well. Is there somebody from the district that's on your side on the team that we can refer to students to that's inside the district in order to link? In order to, I'm sorry. Well, there's a communication problem you know, uh, in, inside, the, yeah, inside the district. Tell you what, that lady right there behind you is Kelly. After we finish your chat with Kelly, we'll set something up to make sure that if you're needing information to get to kids or whatever, we'll find a way to get that done. We want to make sure that they do. We'll find a way to get that done. Mayor, what, what do you do, do, you do about the, this, this gap? I mean, gap between when the programming starts and when the uh, weather gets warm. I know we've only had a couple weeks like that, but that, that seemed to be a problem in the plaza a couple, a couple weeks ago. The city cannot and should not be in the position of providing year-round control of every kid in the city. The districts that have problems can take some steps on their own to control some of those problems. Um, the city cannot afford to be everything to everybody all the time. We are the ones who stepped up last summer. We're stepping up twice as much and more this summer. And I've asked repeatedly, and I will ask again, if people care about this issue, then we need their help. We especially need the help of parents, the help of parents, who can control a lot of the issues about where their kids are by simply knowing where their kids are and doing something about it. There is no problem with people going to the plaza or kids going to the plaza with their parents. Parents go with them. Don't just drop them off. Go with them. Hang out with them. It ain't going to hurt you. They might teach you a new dance move. 
turn you on to a new band. You never know. Keep you a little young. Like you. Mayor, do you have an idea how many youth will be served through all these programs? I can't tell you that. I don't know how many we have in 10,000. We had about 10,000 last year total through. With night hoops. And with the hoops, kicks, kicks and nets, and Club KC. And I, I think that total is probably going to go up a little bit this year. That's what we're expecting. That's why we're planning to do more. If I may just add one thing, you know, another thing really quick just about the about the tracking using the ID cards. Part of it too is for us to understand the number of hours those kids are coming to make sure that we can sort of see how many kids come back repeatedly, other programming that's more effective than others. I mean, part of it is just tracking just overall. We want to make sure we do this, not just for this year, but for future years, for planning, that we're becoming more and more effective uh, as a department, as in partnership with the mayor's office. So that way what we're doing is providing programming and activities that is relevant for the youth, so that way they're using it. It's just not good enough for us just to open up centers. We want them not just to be open, but then to be full and to be used on an ongoing basis. And then for us to also understand from our vendors who are also providing service how good they're doing and making sure that they're meeting and they're being held accountable and doing a great job on their end, which we're confident that they will. It's just a way for us to measure outcomes at the same time. Well, so are you going to swipe in and out or just in? Well, I think, you know, swiping in, I think we're looking at the idea of swiping out as well, but I think part of it is just to, just, just to start to really begin to sort of look at this as a way for us to begin to track and understand what they're using initially and then going, going forward as we, as we become a little more sophisticated in, in this process. Pat? Uh, Mayor, what will it take, or is there a possibility of the community centers opening up uh, before May 24th? And another thing that might be helpful is maybe uh, having the parents pre-register the kids, or, you know, prior to the kids coming down to the center? Um, well, the community centers are open. I mean, kids can come to the community centers during their normal working hours now. Um, but I'm talking about on the weekends. Well, I don't think that I, we're not going to be able to make any alterations to the plan now. Uh, we don't have the money to extend it any further than we've already extended it, to be honest with you. Um, so, no, I don't think for those purposes it's going to change, at least not this year. Depending on what the council decides to do with a year-long ordinance, then maybe something there. But again, when we tell kids where they can't be, I'm going to insist that we tell them where they can be. So that's going to have a fiscal note attached to it. It's going to cost something somewhere. So we're going to have to make some decisions on how that's going to happen. With regards to the registration, absolutely, that's the whole purpose. They don't, parents don't even have to bring them to register. Parents, just get them online. Go to my website, www.kcmayor.org slash mayor's nights. You can register online. Then the parents only have to drop them by long enough to pick up the card. I think they get a picture taken to put on the card. That's it. And then they're golden. They can come in and come and go, and they've got their own card, etc. So we're looking to make this as smooth and efficient as possible. We're also looking to make it as valuable to the kids as possible. And the registration, we think, helps do that. And extending it from 8 to 12 weeks <coughs> does some of that, too. But, you know, when we're thinking about this issue, particularly on the plaza, what we're talking about are those, you know, the, the kids aren't there in the middle of December when the snow is falling. They're there in November when, it, when unexpectedly it's a 60-degree day. Well, we can't plan for that. I guess we could watch Gary Lezak or whoever and get that long ranger and maybe do that, but that's not practical. So, you know, I'm, I have some reluctance about trying to program for an entire year and pay that freight for every day when we know that that's not really going to be the need. So we're going to have to figure this out, and it might take a little time. Um, and to make sure that when we have police officers who are on the plaza later at night or in Zona Rosa later at night and they're getting paid overtime that we have to do it. It has a budgetary implication for sure. But the other implications are that it's, a, it's not a fix to the problem. It's a band-aid on a bleeder. We have kids that need places to go. And they happen to show up on the plaza, and frankly, they're just not as welcome there in some instances as you might think. And that's understandable. People have their own things, and, and, and some of those times when kids are acting out, that's horribly inappropriate, and it scares people. Totally understand that. But they're going to go somewhere. Where do we want them to go? 
the reality is, is that there's not a movie theater between the plaza and Independence. So what do we expect them to do? Um, there's not bowling alleys. There's not places for them to go and entertain themselves. That's the reality that I deal with, is that we don't want them in some places, but we can't do anything else uh, except bring them to the community centers and do the best we can there. So all of those things bother me. Uh, not just the money, but certainly the money's a part of it. Yeah. city can't solve every problem. Those, the days of government solving every problem are over, don't exist anymore. Mayor, how difficult is it to sell this program to the private sector, to corporations? Is it pretty tough now? To some piece of cake, there are some of our corporate citizens that you call them up. I called up one corporate citizen asking, we had sent out letters and called them up to follow up and ask for, you know, five-figure contribution. He said, I could have saved you the call slide. You, you know I'm going to send you the check, you know. And then there are others that, you know, it's, it's like people. Corporations are like people. You got some you love and some you not so much. <laughs> Anybody else? No? Thank you very much.